So, good morning, friends. I don't think we should be waiting any longer. We've already waited for four minutes. So, uh, welcome to this second lecture of uh, CIIPS course. Uh, before we actually enter into the into the session today, which is about introduction to TRIZ, uh, are there any questions that are pending from the last class? Anything that you want to bring up? You can unmute and speak. Uh, sir, at the very end, uh, uh, there was something regarding the nature of the project. Someone asked, actually. Mm, I'm sorry, can you please repeat? So someone uh, was interested to know regarding the nature of the projects and what kind of it would be involved in. OK, so we will look at uh, projects which are real life. <laughs> So we will uh, we will uh, discuss some grand challenges. For example, uh, the air pollution problem in Delhi in November December time frame. Uh, we will apply tools that we will learn in this tool to see uh, what needs to be done, and we will identify a problem statement, which uh, which requires some redesigning, which requires some problem solving, inventive problem solving. Hmm? Uh, we could think of uh, problems like uh, how to ensure last mile connectivity from uh, Delhi Metro, or uh, you know how to ensure how to enable each and every uh, rickshaw puller to have a GPS uh, system with them, so that we could have an Uber app for rickshaws also, something like that. So we would think of some real life problems which would make life of uh, citizens in and around Delhi or in India or elsewhere easier. And uh, we will apply tools and see how to get this thing going. Uh, another thing that we could be doing is that some of you who, for example, have your own startups or ideas that you want to you know, have startup around, you can actually pick up those ideas and uh, you could apply the tools on those ideas. Uh, those of you who have your research projects ongoing with your MTech thesis or PhD thesis, you could apply trace principles on those and we could discuss those. Does that help? Oh, sure, sir. Sir, also, like, uh, will this involve, like, the project, the patent things will also be coming in that scope only? Uh, yes. So, uh, in the last run of the course, we had uh, done a specific set of assignments on how to read patents and everything. Over here, we are not doing, because we wanted to reduce the total number of evaluations and limit them to five, uh, we are not doing those assignments and all that. So what we are doing is that whatever project you choose, uh, regarding that project, you do a patent search and uh, review patents around that. Okay, and that becomes a part of the project work itself. Yes, that becomes a part of the project only. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? I had a few students coming to me and requesting that this Wednesday 8.30 slot doesn't suit them because they have an alternate first year course that they are improving upon. And I believe that is also one of the reasons why we have lesser attendance today. So uh, I will come back to you on uh, Google Classroom because those students are not here today. So it will be slightly difficult to review that aspect. But I will come back to you on Google Classroom and we can arrive at a alternate time, uh, which would not be Wednesdays 8.30 to 10 on 8.30 to 9.50, but an alternate time, uh, which could be on a Saturday or sometime other some other time. Uh, say late in, late in the evening on some weekdays, and we will look at that. We will do that within today and tomorrow, so that those of you who need to adjust your timetables accordingly for the course ad drop period, you can do that. But for that, you have to be on the Google Classroom already. So the Google Classroom code uh, we already shared earlier. Uh, please join that Google Classroom. Okay. So with that, let's. Uh, start with today's session. Today's session, as I mentioned, is about introduction to theory of inventive problem solving, which is also called as TRIS, or in fact, introduction to TRIS, which is also called as theory of inventive problem solving. Hmm. So uh, see, in typical ideation methods, what is it that you observe? Typically, when you brainstorm, what, do you, what happens? You come up with lots of ideas, 
and then you have to evaluate those ideas to identify the good ones have uh, like have you experienced that all of you must have you know and we have all all solved some problem or another at at different points of time in our lives so uh, have you experienced that when you usually brainstorm you come up with lots of ideas of which just one or two may be good and the remaining are not really worthy of further exploration has it happened with you yes sir mm -hmm. so uh, when that happens you may not know at the outset that the bad ideas are bad ones you may think that this is also a good idea and you may end up evaluating it and you finally realize oh yeah it doesn't work has it happened yes sir yes. yes so that's a waste of time so this this is a typical trial and error method where we brainstorm we ideate and uh, we come up with lots of ideas and just a few of them would work many may be promising but just a few of them would work and uh, we end up wasting a lot of time in entrepreneurship track when you want to start your company or when you are in your job or when you are in a life critical situation life threatening situation do you want to go into a trial and error method or do you want something which is more efficient efficient time crunch then more efficient the more the time crunch the the more the importance of being you know in the market on time or being able to find a solution faster than others that faster than your competition remember the the deer and tiger story that we started the course with so whenever the time is of essence whenever the survival is of essence you do not want to go to the conventional trial and error method and uh, what you would ideally want is that okay i just want the golden nugget i want the idea that simply works and i want to simply implement it hmm? am i right that is what all of us desire and the good news is that this toolbox triz that i am introducing you to uh, can actually help us do exactly that how does it do that well, this is just a small introduction and during the course we will actually learn various stress tools uh, and and try to do exactly this thing okay so uh, let's before we move ahead let's watch a very short movie about what stress is hmm? give me a second so 
what was happening here who can tell me what did you capture out of this so you showed the yeah. evolution of ideas over the time by various scientists and how it eventually like in modern era it uh, led to patents like uh, people started uh, doing patents of various ideas mhm uh oh, like in the very end so it seems that a person like kind of synthesized or like uh, synthesized all those uh, ideas from the different patents or like to synthesize the knowledge that he could gain from different kind of patents to some kind of a book type or a like set of rules kind of something come up with interesting so good so this this movie is actually so this movie and a few more that we will see today Uh, were generated as a part of European project on popularizing PRIS. So uh, this is a kind of a this is a multilingual movie. In fact, you would see that uh, the titles were here in English, but there are there are other mo- other versions of the movie where titles are in uh, French and Italian and others, so that the whole European Union could know more about PRIS. And. Uh, uh, what we actually are talking about when we talk about trez uh it's a russian acronym so we are talking about theory of inventive problem solving but uh, we are always using the word trez instead of tips so the russian the russian uh, phrase uh, summarizes or uh, gets acronymized to trez but uh, in english we call it as theory of inventive problem solving so uh, there was this a person called generic uh, olshula who was an inventor by nature who, uh, even as a child he would think of uh, uh, trying to uh, find solutions inventive solutions to problems and uh, he studied more than 2000 patents as a part of his uh, exploration of ideas so what he always felt was that just like there is the science of uh, physics or or you know chemical equations or uh, you know there is this mathematic uh, levels of abstraction of uh, algebra and so on or trigonometry and so on so which without even getting to know the real numbers or the real problem we could solve it on a paper hmm? for example in chemistry i know that if i mix copper sulfate with uh, with say sodium uh, i will get some compound which is i do not really need to do that experiment just by the nature of or my understanding of the chemistry or the uh, or the phenomena how chemical reactions occur i can always identify what will be the output hmm? so olshuler felt that the same should exist for problem solving and uh, he wanted to find patterns patterns in in various problem solving techniques and he studied more than 2 lakh patents in a period of over 20 years so uh, you know we have not i am i am not sure how many of you have read even one or two patents a few of you may have but most of us do not read patents it's not easy to read them this guy read more than 2 lakh patents mm-hmm. and today accessing those patents is very easy we have internet we have uspto website we have google scholar we have patent.google.com and so on so many places where all these patents are consolidated we just need to do a search and we will get all the patents that we want to study in those times there was nothing like that we had papers uh, patents in fact they were uh, typed uh, and typed we nahi kahenge they were stylos stylosized and uh, that kind of papers on which those patents were written and this guy actually read so many of them and he rated them he rated those inventions on a scale of uh, small improvements to discoveries he classified them to identify trends and proposed a higher level abstraction of finding solutions to problems this methodology of using a higher level of abstraction to find solutions to problems is theory of inventive problem solving or in russian you would use the other uh, uh expansion and it's called tris okay so uh typically you know if you look at this equation 3x square plus 5x plus 2 is equal to 0 uh the solutions to this equation are minus 1 and minus 2 by 
but do you ever solve it by a hit and trial method? Okay, so sometimes you would, but uh, let us say I gave you an equation like uh, 9x square plus 2x plus 5. Would you be able to simply factorize it and solve it by a hit and trial method? Uh, we may, but it will take time, but we have a systematic method in place, so we will use that. Yes. So the systematic method in place that we have is we say that, okay, this 3x square plus 5x plus 2 is equivalent to ax square plus bx plus c. I know the standard solution for ax square plus bx plus c, and I will simply, you know, replace a, b, and c in this solution to arrive at my answers. Am I right? Yes, sir. So this is what we do in mathematics. Let us look at another example. Uh, physics. Let us say I'm heating the this particular rod. Uh, let me just put my laser pointer there. Let me say that I'm heating this particular rod from this X, uh, from the left side. Hmm? If I'm heating it from the left side, what happens? I want to find the temperature as the thing moves towards the right. If I have some kind of information about this material and the heating mechanism and so on, I would use the, the double derivative minus K D2, D2T by DX square is equal to QX, the kind of energy I've invested in it. If I do not have that kind of information, I will use the del operators. If I do not have even that kind of information, I will use Laplace transforms. And uh, these are all simple solution operators. We know that if it, it is the Laplace transform LT is equal to Q, then to find the value of T at any given point, I just need to do L inverse into Q. And I will be able to arrive at answers. So in the same manner, uh, Altschuler proposed different levels of abstraction for TRIS. Uh, the most fundamental, most basic level is called technical contradiction matrix. Above that, is called physical contradiction matrix. And you will notice that as we go higher up in the level uh, of abstraction, even in physics or elsewhere, uh, we need some additional information. So we may need to do some additional homework. Hmm? And uh, the still more higher level of abstraction is substance field diagrams. We'll talk about uh, technical contradictions and physical contradictions in this course. Substance field diagrams, I will introduce them to you. And uh, depending on your project basis, we could actually go and use this particular abstraction in much more detail. Otherwise, uh, the, in the class, we will just have a simple introduction of the substance field diagrams. But the intent of sharing this, these two examples with you was that the method that we use in regular sciences and mathematics of going to a higher level of abstraction is the same method we will use for inventive problem solving in the projects that we just talked about. Hmm? Any questions? So I mean, uh, the different level of abstractions, like how would uh, I was not able to really get like what, like if we are not able to solve via technical contradiction matrix, then we would be moving to physical contradiction. Yes. And so they would be dealing with different kind of uh, parameters or like. Yeah. Okay. So uh, see how to move from one level of abstraction to another. That is something that we will learn as a part of this course. Don't worry about that aspect. Huh. That is something we will anyways learn. But what is important is to realize that that is what we anyways do in other domains of our uh, uh, work also. Hmm. That is what we anyways do in other domains of our work also. So uh, it's it's nothing new. We as as engineers are actually used to it. Hmm? Are you able to see that? So it's like like applying those scientific principles only, but to this new kind of creativity or inventing problems, finding inventive solutions. It is it is applying the same principles to problem solving as we know it. Okay, sir. Okay. Hmm? So we we today know problem solving only through hit and trial method. Now we want to say, okay, we know science 
we know mathematics and we know that we can apply better more advanced methods to for problem solving in these domains and that is what we will use here also okay so uh, the tris toolbox overall is is distributed in three different uh, zones the first zone is problem identification i briefly mentioned that in my in my last lecture but uh, you know many times what happens is the problem as it appears to us for example we just talked about the air pollution in delhi the problem of air pollution in delhi november december time frame hmm? so now this might sound to be a huge problem which we as individuals may not be able to even uh, influence am i right we may get overwhelmed by the magnanimity of the problem in itself that it is a huge problem how do i as an individual solve it so the first aspect of tris toolbox is that we pick up whatever problem we have and we use tools like function analysis cause effect chain analysis uh, flow analysis and so on to to break it up into smaller problems and then see what is the root cause and possibly act only on the root cause so that the biggest problem simply disappears and there may be multiple root causes but handling those multiple root causes may be much simpler than thinking of uh, you know this big problem in in the first place so the first problem the first aspect of tris toolbox is how to revisualize my problem you know how to get, get get to a different level of abstraction for my problem so that i can get some handle of solving it hmm? then once we have redefined the problem once we have reorganized the problem that is when we come to the next aspect which is problem solving again as i mentioned there are uh, different tools that we will use for solving problems over here for example we could use uh, uh, arbolism for inventive problem solving we could use inventive principles we could use function oriented search and so on hmm? once we have identified some solutions to the problems you will realize that each solution may have some corresponding lingering problem or while this is a solution to the major problem it can lead to some side effects so how do we solve those secondary problems that may appear that is the last part of tris toolbox where we talk about concept substantiation how to solve these secondary problems now we may actually have a solution which would not only solve the major problem but that solution could be applied to three other places and we could solve those problems also or we could improve the performance of the system in those places also so that is what is called as super effect analysis concept evaluation and so on so that is the third phase of tris again the third phase of tris we will go on more in terms of our projects not exactly in terms of lectures we will not cover it in form of lectures but we will want to do that as a part of your project okay so the first part and the second part we will cover in the lectures the third part we will actually focus more on on specific project basis okay so it is very important that you uh, participate in office hours uh, once you start with your projects and and you start to move forward you participate in office hours and uh, take support from me take support from tas take support from uh, each other so that you can uh, substantiate your concepts better okay uh going forward let us look at uh what we mean by technical contradiction the first the basic level of abstraction that we talked about parul you have a question yes sir Uh, sir, in the second phase of TRIS, uh, whatever solution we have devised in the first phase, uh, there are some side effects that are uh, uh, that may occur. So to handle those side effects, we are going to devise uh, some other solution. Uh, so that is called secondary problem solving, and that may be much simpler. Yeah, okay. we would we would identify some additional solutions to solve those secondary effects also. And Otherwise, the, the system phase, would not work. Yes, sir. And in third phase, we are going to. Uh, so you told that we are going to devise a, a major solution. What does no, no, it okay. mean? So the first phase is problem reorganization, problem reformulation, so that we come to smaller problems that we can handle. Okay. 
the second phase is where we identify solutions okay problem solving phase the third phase is concept substantiation where we talk about secondary problem solving and and applying the solutions that we have identified to other associated problems in the system how can we optimize the system further because we now have this solution in our hands okay yes sir okay. thank you sir yeah raghav uh sir i had to uh, regarding the concept substantiation only so like substantiation we generally use to like providing evidence or establishing something by a proof so so like is it like the whatever a uh, solution that we have uh, uh, involved in the second stage we are trying to kind of substantiate it by a different applications like is it uh, uh since no. that so one thing that all of you need to be careful about is that the that this toolbox was primarily developed in russia hmm? Okay. so you do not go with the regular english translation or an regular english meaning of uh, many of the words that we use in this toolbox okay. okay sir we do not use our understanding of english as is rather we will go to the first principles and we will go in i do not want to change the way the terms are used here because if a few of you want to go for certification later tris organizations would use the same words okay so i do not want to change the words over here that's why i have not changed the words like substantiation over here i would rather if if it if it was my choice i would have used the term concept development okay hmm. okay so but they they use the term substantiation and i don't want to change that because that's the standard term that matrix uses Okay. Okay. If you want to go for certification, then uh, if you use content concept development, they would not give you any points. Sure, sir. Okay. Okay. So I still want to because you may want you suppose you join Samsung. Samsung has its own trade association. Okay. Suppose you join uh, Intel. Intel has its own trade association. They all use the same language. If I give you a different language here, I will be kind of uh, uh, changing things, and that's not appropriate. okay so you can you can understand it as concept development okay so now coming to the first level of abstraction so typically we as engineers understand that whenever we want to solve a problem let us say that i want to improve the speed of uh, my system uh, i typically would have to spend more power even if it's a car if i want to drive the car at a very high speed the overall efficiency the fuel efficiency of the car decreases you know this hmm? when i want to design a circuit which is high speed i have to increase the sizes i have to somehow give more power i have to operate it at a higher voltage something like that has to be done so this is one of the you know things that we see so what is happening is there is a kind of a seesaw i want to improve the speed so power would degrade if i want to reduce the power the speed would degrade and so on that is what we are usually see this is called as a technical contradiction when trills was when alshuler was analyzing those 2 lakh patents he could see that good solutions or inventive solutions involved finding uh, or improving one parameter without degrading the other okay and he therefore identified 40 inventive principles which were used across all these patents so we are talking about 2 lakh patents but only 40 inventive principles how is it possible hmm? so uh, you know visible light a typical prism would split it into seven seven wavelengths am i right hmm? seven colors with your but how many colors do you see around yourself millions of them what are what are we doing just through those seven basic colors we are mixing and matching them in different ways and arriving at so such a vast color palette am i right similarly even though these inventive principles are only 40 in number they can they are able to solve almost all the range of problems that we may face this basic level of uh usage of inventive principles along a technical contradiction matrix is the first level of abstraction that we would use in our projects okay 
This is the easiest to use because we already are talking in terms of output parameters. We're talking about speed and we're talking about power. We're talking about uh, uh, efficiency and we're talking about cost. We're talking about uh, reliability and we're talking about quality. These parameters which are directly relevant to us and to our customers. Hmm? We're directly talking about them. So no further tweaking is required. All that we need to do is we need to so Altula made a 39 cross 39 matrix. Mm -hmm. And this 39 cross 39 matrix is about these parameters. Uh, you know, uh, speed, power, efficiency, reliability, cost, so on. Manufacturability, all these parameters, he put them there. And he said, okay, if I am improving speed and uh, the area degrades, then what is it that I want? What are the inventive principles that are most commonly used? So he made a, a lookup, a matrix lookup, which appears something like this. And in this lookup table, he put in, uh, in every box, he put in some inventive principles, which were most commonly used to solve this kind of a problem. Hmm? For example, if it was that uh, we wanted to improve the weight of the moving object, but as a result of that, the force that needed to be applied degraded. Then what kind of principles, inventive principles were used to solve them? And he gave four of them in that box. And in the background, the matrix that you are seeing, you will notice that in some boxes, there is only one principle. In some boxes, there are two. In some boxes, there are three and so on. So he only filled those boxes where there was a statistically relevant result. Okay, and by using these principles, what these principles are, we will just look at them. By using these principles and by mixing and matching them, we could solve almost all those problems there. So principles are like segmentation. What does segmentation mean? That you break a long component, a big component into smaller components. For those of you who know SRAMs and circuit design, uh, we use that, use, we use this mechanism in, in SRAMs. We break bit lines into smaller capacitances so that we can operate faster. All of us know bicycles. You know, when you want to make the chain of a bicycle, you want it to be very strong and very robust. We want it to be made of iron, for example. But can you, is, is iron a flexible material in itself? No, iron is very rigid. So to make a chain which is flexible out of iron, what did we do? We broke that into small nuggets and we connected those nuggets together. Overall, we had the flexibility due to these nuggets, but the strength because of iron. Typically, the challenge is if I use a flexible material, for example, a jute rope, it is not strong enough. It will, it will die out within a matter of a few weeks. So I wanted iron to be used, but iron in itself, iron rods, are not flexible. How do I build a chain out of it? So segmentation principle is used to solve that kind of a problem. Asymmetry. We add asymmetry in our uh, in, in different places to improve uh, different parameters. All of you have cell phones and I assume all of you have smartphones with you. Uh, if you go into the detailed specifications of your of the application processor of your smartphone, you will realize that not all the processors that are being provided to you in your application processor, all the cores are not alike. There are big cores and there are small cores. And this is done to improve power efficiency and overall performance also. So when you need very high performance, you use the big cores. Uh, they consume more power, but that's fine. But when you do not need that kind of a performance, you, you switch over to the little cores so that you save power. Mm -hmm. Local hierarchy, again, the chain of a bicycle or cache hierarchy. All of us over here are IT engineers. We know the purpose of L1 caches, L2 caches in our systems. Hmm? Uh, equipotentiality. Uh, uh, do you know how, a, how, how a ships move from one side of the Panama Canal to the other? Yes, sir. There is a kind of land, kind of raised land between two seas. Hmm. So Sir, they increase the water level too. But the... Yes. So what they do is there is a small channel. The ship enters into that small channel and uh, they close, they close the, 
the the gates from this from the atlantic side into this channel then they pump water from the atlantic itself into this channel so that the water level inside this small channel rises so the ship automatically is floating on that water slip all ship also rises once the ship has risen to the next level they open the output gate the exit gate and the ship moves forward a few kilometers once the ship is in that next zone again more water is filled here the level of ship rises again simply because of the principle of equipotentiality that the ship would rise and then at an equip you once it has reached the same potential as the next level you open the exit gate and the ship would simply move to the next okay and uh, this principle so big problem how to raise how to move tons you know thousands of tons is the weight of a ship how to move a ship from one side from the atlantic side to the pacific or vice versa and equipotentiality is the inventive principle that is used here hmm? uh um, dynamicity is another principle uh again you know you can just do a google search and and find out more about so many other principles that we use in our day to day life intermediaries uh, i want to trans uh, you know uh, ship one packet and i do not want it to get damaged i use bubble packs so what i what do i use i say there is an intermediary between the outside environment and in my package so bubble packs protects my uh uh package self service auto defrost feature in our refrigerators whenever the whenever the there is frost happening inside the the refrigeration unit auto defrost function kicks in a uh, use of copies virtual reality that's that's one thing strong oxidizers Uh, we use chlorine to kill germs in water potassium permanganate all that so we have been using these inventive principles everywhere just that until i came back to you or until for the first time for example altschuler said that okay this is the principle and it is used across so many different domains we did not realize that okay these inventive principles could actually be used in this form of a lookup table or contradiction matrix to solve problems hmm so let's look at how uh, another movie and in that movie we look at how uh, this table can be used to solve problems uh, even at school level hmm just give me sir. a minute yes so can we move to the previous slide once where you had to look up it yes please so here in the background we can see that uh, some of the places are remained uh, means they are not filled so yeah. uh, is that some of the features are not matching with the other or they do not have any correlation something so like it's that. something like uh, there is one feature which is called weight of a moving object and there is other feature called weight of a stationary object okay uh, so for example these first two the 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 column 1 row 2 and row 2 column 1 they are empty because of exactly this reason hmm? so uh, some some blocks are like that and some blocks are empty simply because uh, there is no way to there is no statistically relevant inventive principle that is used to solve this problem hmm. both the cases exist but many of these boxes are empty because simply because the two cannot coexist the two contradictions cannot coexist you cannot have a moving and stationary object like uh, object cannot be moving and stationary at the same time uh, and sir one more thing uh, yeah. in each of the boxes some uh, some are two numbers are written some are three or some are four numbers are written on hmm. what basis uh, is, so as uh, i mentioned only so alshula found that these were the only two statistically relevant solutions Okay. These two principles were the that, only uh, ones that were used in a statistically relevant manner. He doesn't want you to waste time on on the remaining solutions. Okay. Yes. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Sir, I am still not able to get this table. Like, how does this table work? And like, I'm still very confused on this. Yeah. Let's look at an example, and we will find out. Okay, sir. Hmm? 
So uh, let's look at an example and, and it will be easy to find out then. Hmm? Are you able to see how these inventor principles are made to use? Is this clearer now? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Hmm. So what happens is we identify the, the features which are in conflict with each other. We go to that particular box and we identify the inventor principles. And then we brainstorm around those inventor principles. OK, and, uh, you know, for example, uh, we will not go into much details of this, but we use this for circuits. This is just to share that example with you. We use this with circuits. We have a memory cell. And uh, those of you who know memory cells, uh, you would realize that in memory cells, uh, there is a very strong conflict between writability and stability. We want to write, you want to make uh, some parts of the circuit weak so that you are able to make the cell writable. But as soon as you do that, the overall speed of the system degrades. Okay. So what we saw was that, okay, we want to improve the speed, 
but to improve the speed i have to change the strength and that is what is is not desirable so we looked at this particular box we saw okay 8 and 3 8 3 26 and 14 were the principles which are most commonly used to solve this kind of a conflict or contradiction so uh, what are the principles used counterweight local quality copying and pseudodality i brainstormed around all these four and what i could find was that okay this local quality is an inventive principle that i could easily come up with interesting solutions with copying was another idea which i could use much easily hmm? and uh, we entered into the uh, into the design phase we designed a new memory cell which had copies of these pmoses which were which whose strength was a point of concern and uh, we added these inside locally inside the memory cell uh, not at the at the entire memory level and so on so uh, i do not want to bore you down and uh, with the details of what what is happening here but this is again just another example of even if it is a core technical problem that you are facing all that you need to do is identify what parameters are in conflict with each other are contradicting each other put them in the contradiction matrix and you will get directions in which you should brainstorm to find good answers okay so uh, this uh, this solution was in fact patented uh, and is a patent in st portfolio today okay so uh, if we talk of tris tools in fact i would say that tris toolbox is like a swiss knife hmm? uh, what what does a swiss knife do it uses different it has so many contraptions within itself that you use different uh, extensions of the swiss knife for different purposes hmm? so inventive principles and contradiction matrix matrix are just one of those tools in the tris toolbox and just a small part of the swiss knife as we said the second level of abstraction or higher level of abstraction is physical contradictions where we say that any technical contradiction exists because of an underlying physical contradiction what does a physical contradiction mean physical contradiction means that uh, there is some object which is expected to exhibit two independent and two different properties of the same parameter for example i may say that uh, this uh, uh what do you say the chain of a bicycle it need to be strong hard but it also needs to be flexible now we're talking about the same object the chain of the bicycle but i want it to be hard and i want it to be flexible also now these appear to be contradictions hmm? uh on the same object i want it to be hard i want it to be uh to to not to be flexible but i want it to be flexible also and uh such contradictions when we zero them down onto one component of the entire system are called as physical contradictions okay and he then said that okay we will use separation principles to solve physical contradictions now don't worry i know this this might appear like greek and latin to you but i just want to give you an example that the next level of abstraction again would involve uh inventive principles but now organized in a different manner in the technical contradiction matrix we had the inventive principle or principles organized in a 39 plus 39 matrix in this level of abstraction those inventive principles are organized in just four or five categories how to separate these opposing requirements in space time system sub system level relationship direction and so on so from a 39 plus 39 matrix we have reduced the solution set to just five boxes and we use inventive principles from these five boxes now let's look at an example uh of separation in time over here hmm? i want to build houses on snow hmm? so if you need to build houses on snow you need to you know dig logs of wood into the snow into frozen soil and then build houses on those logs uh do you know of this method of of uh, making houses in snow have you read it somewhere studied it somewhere you do you know about it seen it somewhere or it's all alien to you yet 
not seen sir okay so sir so, so, this is not and no okay because the soil is frozen so see in in india if you want to make houses what do you do you simply dug the dig the soil you make the basement uh, you make the foundation and you start building the house am i right that is not possible in frozen uh, in in places where you have frozen soil so what you do is you actually dig uh, you do not dig you actually just uh, bore and uh, 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 install these logs into soil on these logs then you you know you use them as pillars and then you build a house over them okay so because you cannot uh, you know you cannot make a foundation like you do in in a regular soil you have to use these you have to bore these logs into soil and uh, use them as pillars hmm? house boards you may have seen a uh, house boards same uh, these uh, uh, piers that you have uh, along uh, lakes where boats would come and you would jump onto the boats and all that so those are also done like this you you bore logs into that wet soil the soil of the lake and you build those piers above them you seen at least that you must have seen even if not the snow snow stuff hmm yes sir yes sir so now what you want is that you want to bore fast so you want the tip to be pointed because like a pencil if i have if i use a pointed pencil to to make a hole in a in in some place i will do it faster however if i do that what happens uh my stability of the system stability of those pillars reduces hmm so what is done is we separate the requirements in time we say that okay when i am boring i will have a pointed tip but this tip actually has an explosive inside it i will blow the explosive away i will blow this a uh, dynamic away once i have reached the depth that i require so what happens the head of the log becomes blunt now it was sharp when you wanted to when you wanted to bore but it is blunt when you wanted that stability hmm? so this is a, the application of uh, uh, the separation and time principle and uh, the inventive principle that was used was nested dolls over here okay similarly separation in relationship uh do you guys drive how many of you know drive like is there anyone who does not know or has not driven a car sitting in the front uh, on the front seat anyone who has not done that sit uh, driven a car sitting on a front seat or you know you may not be driving yourself but at least as a rider you will sitting on the front seat hmm? all of you have done that so if you do that and if you've driven on nights where uh there was two way traffic on the road have you experienced that the cars that are coming from the opposite side they kind of glare into your eyes yes yes and you're not able yes, to yes. see the you're not able to see the road clearly so what do you say okay go to low beam what the, what happens when you go to low beam you're not putting a glare into the other driver's eyes but what happens because you are on low beam now you cannot drive very fast because what happens you are not able to see far away and you may actually cause an accident uh, to a to a pedestrian or or an animal who is crossing the road it happens so what do you want you want low beam and high beam to coexist you want to be able to see any pedestrian or any uh, animal uh, crossing the street but you do not want to put a glare into the other driver's eye also you want both so what is done is uh this was again a patented solution uh there were two beams the infrared beam was high beam and the visible range beam was low beam so the visible beam uh, uh, range beam would tell anyone be it pedestrians be it animals or be it the other drivers that there is a car coming from this side and you see the dashboard of this car over here you are able to see the pedestrians and animals that are right up there so that you can slow down and let them cross so this is separation and relation so for me i am able to see uh, the 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 pedestrians also 
and I'm not even putting a glare in the other driver's eye. Hmm? And the inventive principle that we're using over here is phase change, uh, not just phase change, color change. Okay. So uh, is this being implemented anywhere in the world? Because yeah, I this have is a patent by BMW. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, in fact, the same problem of memory write and uh, read, we actually used physical contradictions to arrive at a much more efficient solution. So if, if, if you remember in those in that earlier solution with technical contradiction matrix, we went to eight transistors. We added two more PMOSs there. Over here, we actually arrived at a much more efficient solution by applying physical contradiction to the same problem statement. And the solution was uh, 2x better than the reference in terms of writability and 8x faster also. So not so. it was not that we did not degrade the other parameter while improving the first one. We improved both the parameters which were in conflict by using physical contradiction matrix, uh, physical contradiction uh, solutions there. Okay. So again, this is just to show that we can apply it in different domains. Coming to a still higher level of abstraction, uh, the third one, the substance field diagram that I talked to you about. Uh, See, in mathematics, we have this language of algebra. In chemistry, we have chemical equations. In semiconductor physics, we talk of band diagrams. So Altshuler said, let me define a language for inventive problem solving also. So he, he came up with this, uh, you know, he, he utilized the learning from mathematics and said that, okay, I have to go to a higher level of abstraction to find solutions. He now said that just like they use a language, why can't we use a language in inventive problem solving. And he defined what is called as a substance field diagram. He said that typically, typically there would be interactions between substances, which could be insufficient or harmful. And therefore any problem would exist in the first place. By, by correcting the substance field diagrams, we could handle all the problems that the system is experiencing. Okay. And he said the kinds of fields that you could use could be mechanical, thermal, chemical, electrical, magnetic, optical, acoustic, and so on. So he listed these fields also, which could be used to solve the problems. In fact, what he did was, um, okay, so let's look at an example of how this works. Hmm? Let us say, uh, this, now this again was a real problem. This, this was, a, uh, this was a, a, a factory where steel ball bearings were being manufactured. Okay. Now, in a factory setup, in a factory shaft flow, you would create something in one area and you would transfer it to the other part of the shaft floor. So these steel ball bearings were to be transported from uh, the, in the place where they were kind of made to another place where they would be packaged or they would be polished or something like that, let us say. But this, this movement is required. This movement was being done by using steel pipes. Hmm? Now, what, what was noticed was that wherever there were bends in the pipe, the, the pipe would break every two months. And then you would have to halt the production. You will have to... Uh, change the pipe and then restart the production. So it resulted in loss of time. It resulted in extra cost because you have to change pipes every two months. So what would you do if you were in this place? So, so instead of where we, we could, could add use... some uh, strong, um, strong material on the, uh, like over the bending of the pipe. So that it can't break. Okay. So Anuj, what you're telling us is you're, you're using the principle of local quality. Only where the pipe is bending, I would make the material stronger so that I do not increase the overall cost, but I improve the life. Am I right? Yes. So this principle is called local quality, inventive principle of local quality. Great. But now instead of two months, the system would fail after six months. Sir, I have improvised it, but this, it will still fail. Hmm? What else can we do? The way, uh, we can change the way in which the ball's trajectory, uh, I mean, it moves. How do you do that? 
like some other kind of band uh no that would mean more shaft floor area or uh, maybe because they are steel balls uh, they can roll over themselves to the side where they are supposed to go so using uh, the okay so you're saying that they can they just can have, roll over yeah they can just have like a sliding like a passage and they can yeah. just roll over but what if my shaft floor was only one floor and there was no no that potential energy or something available with me so in mm-hmm. fact this is a good idea we could use it in some places but in this place it was not possible i was thinking maybe the we could corner use... with some shock absorbing materials we can insulate the corner with that yeah again local quality uh, but uh, as i said the local quality the problem is after some time it would fail hmm? sir we can make the corners movable like if we have to change it also that like it wears out then we can directly remove it and install new one instead of uh, removing the whole pipe okay so you segment it so that you replace only that particular part yes so sir. the cost factor you taken care of though uh, you will still need to halt production every 2 months or 6 months instead of air plus steel balls we could have used water plus steel balls like uh, it could avoid the damage direct damage to the walls so you are using a material intermediary so that uh, the balls would would slow down before they hit the wall and therefore the damage would reduce hmm so this principle is intermediary great i am happy you know you see uh, without even using the technical contradiction matrix you are already thinking on using those principles that we just talked about so since you have uh, for example uh, put the heading as self service so i mean it would be using some kind of the parts in wall itself maybe uh, like maybe i Uh, I mean the moving parts or the balls. Maybe you are. I mean you within the system it generates a solution kind of that. Maybe you are looking. We are not able to control the solution. Maybe, but yeah, just. So thank you, Raga, for taking us in that direction. But Sujan and Saurav, uh, Shubham, I see your hands also raised. Do you want to add something? Sir, like we could work on like the when the ball uh, the. bearings are moving uh, and the corners we could try to uh, decrease its speed like applying air pressure in the opposite direction so that its speed its speed decreases at the corners yeah so yes intermediary again high pressure air channel there uh, some extra cost in getting those channels in uh, in every bend that you may have on the shaft floor but yeah good idea somyadeep so we can uh... uh interchange the movable parts like the balls the bearings are movable so we can keep them at resting and instead we can have the pipe uh, like a conveyor belt to be movable okay so with the steel balls the problem is that they will simply roll off the conveyor belt also somyadeep okay hai na the ball bearing so maybe so maybe we can cushion the steel balls with some foam so that uh, they do not Oh, every After steel ball is put a foam, so it's a better to fill. Who intermediate? So you are also talking about adding an intermediary, you know, the the ball and the wall they interact through an intermediary. Mm. That is what you are saying. But yeah, uh, covering every ball with a foam, uh, like uh, so maybe we can put a cushioning foam on the bends only, so that they reduce. Yeah. So that is again local quality. The foam would also wear off after some time, and then you will instead of six months, you will need to replace by seven months. उटरियर सो ग्रेट ग्रेट आइडियाज बट यू नो 
there is a simpler solution, much simpler and cheaper solution. See, when you use a honey or a, some other intermediary, what happens? The balls would also move slow everywhere else, not just close no, to the bend. No, they will not move slow honey everywhere. Honey, the intermediate, uh, not honey, the intermediary. Like steel balls themselves creating a same kind of viscosity, viscosity effect here. Like just a triangle. Steel balls say, and like, viscous. Steel balls are solids. No, means like effect like. Similar kind of effect, like you are mentioning, it's that they are kind of doing a self service or something. So that's why. Okay, so there could be some scientific principle which we could uh, use to have steel balls move like a viscous liquid. Uh, but so uh, I have an idea. Yeah. Maybe we can instead of using a bend, just use two straight uh, pipes and collect the balls at each end and throw at them at the other end of the other pipe. Oh, so what happens is that this 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 pipe was actually running on the roof of the shaft floor. Okay. Hmm. So they will fall every time, they would get damaged, all that would happen. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, okay, let us see if there is a simpler, much simpler answer by using the substance field diagrams. So what is happening is there are two materials, steel balls and the ball, and they are interacting with each other, but they are interacting freely. There is no field which controls their interaction. All the kinetic energy that these balls have, when they hit the wall, they transfer it to the wall and therefore they damage the wall. Am I right? That is what is happening. So, if, so there are this S1 and S2 interaction where there is no field which controls their interaction. A field is missing. What field would you want to add? Now, since we're talking about steel, a very obvious choice could be magnetic field. So what is done is we put a magnet on this bend. Now what happens? The steel balls come and actually attach themselves to the wall of the pipe. Now, new set of balls are coming from behind. They may hit now only these balls. They will not hit the wall now. The balls, they have more than one surface the point in which they are in contact with other sub, other materials. So balls are in touch with each other and the balls are also in touch with the wall. Instead of uh, transmitting all the kinetic energy that was transferred to these balls, these balls would now transmit it to other balls also. And as a consequence, the overall impact on the walls would reduce. When the impact of an incoming ball is very strong, and the ball bearing which was attached to the wall because of magnetic force falls away, let us say, the new ball which had come would actually get attached itself there. So the balls themselves are protecting the wall from other balls. Are you able to see this? Sir, but won't this uh, lead to wastage of some steel balls because they would uh, be stuck, uh, uh, they would be stuck to the magnet. Okay. How many balls would be stuck? 20 balls, 100 balls? How uh, many balls depends. are you manufacturing on a daily basis? Thousands. Okay. Hmm? Sir, won't the balls accelerate while approaching the bend again? Uh, because there is a magnet there? Yes, sir. But they will now, uh, so you can actually, uh, they will now hit other balls only, even if they accelerate a bit, they will only hit other balls. Sir, won't the but magnet also break sometime? Magnet is outside the pipe. Sir, we oh. can use electromagnets, like electric currents to uh, charge yes. the core. So how, now which magnet to use is, a, is the substantiation of the solution. The third stage. Okay. See, when you were applying these principles, I was telling what could the problem be. They were the secondary problems that were coming. So, you know, Abhi jaham ye ideation hi kar rahe the, we were moving from problem identification to solution identification to concept substantiation. Did you realize this? We were doing this, we were, ent we were going through all the three phases when we were talking about the solution to this problem. Did you realize this? Yes. Hmm? So, ab hum kis tarha ka magnet use kare? That is again concept substantiation. What works? What is readily available there? We will use that material. Oh, so, a doubt. Yeah. So, initially, the problem was that the balls were hitting the line, the, hmm. uh, the pipe. The wall. Hmm. But 
due to which it was getting damaged so now when the balls are hitting the other balls even those balls will get damaged right uh but look at it like this uh how many balls would hit any particular ball 10 20 uske baad to ye wali ball hil ke aage move kar jayegi hmm but the pipe would see the impact of thousands of balls we are always talking about steel 10 times hitting a steel ball would not damage it but 1000 times hitting it would definitely damage it right are you able to see this yeah hmm? but so oh, instead okay. yeah so, here so instead of like uh, yeah please go ahead oh uh, here also the uh, Impact of the force is getting reduced because the balls are instead of hitting the pipes are hitting the other balls. So, uh, so it's not that the force is completely gone; it's being reduced. So now, won't the pipe be uh, broken after instead of two months, six or eight months? So, uh, the in fact, the solution actually was so efficient for them that they realized that the pipe, the life of the pipe, actually extended by ten times. Okay. okay and at almost zero cost and then you would apply all those other principles of segmentation so that you only change the bend and everything else also those all those things you could do but uh, what i have the point that i want to put putting forward is that by using this higher level of abstraction they were able to arrive at a much better solution by just completing the substance field diagram they could arrive at that okay so it's a very powerful method actually in fact it is so powerful that these two problems uh, are also similar so hydrofoil do you know what a hydrofoil is uh, which no. is water repellent <sighs> no not a hydrophobe it's a hydrofoil so it's a kind of a boat which uh, which kind of uh, runs on the surface of water so you see this this photo on the left you see the entire boat is outside of water are you able to see this so when you running this boat the entire boat is almost outside the water so there is almost zero drag coming from water and you can actually move very very fast hmm? so the way the hydrofoils are designed they have this uh, this uh, with way these such kind of boats are designed they have this hydrofoil at the bottom which is the only substance interacting with water So the surface area has reduced very significantly, and because they move at very high speed, they generate lots of air bubbles. You can see the air bubbles in the photograph also. What happens is these air bubbles start to cavitate into this material, and after some time, these hydrofoils have to be replaced. Hmm. This is one problem. Another problem is that uh, monkeys. love oranges and they kind of just enter into orange orchards and spoil them completely you know cause havoc and they reduce yield very significantly we want to handle this problem so there are these two problems which appear to be so 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 different but for trees they are actually very similar for trees in substance field diagrams there are two substances air bubbles and hydrofoil and in the other place uh, 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 uh monkeys and oranges orange orchards which are interacting in a harmful manner are you able to see this yes sir two completely different problems but when we went to the substance field diagram the substance field diagram is exactly the same and the solution for such substance field diagrams is also exactly the same and the solution is introduce a modification of either substance 1 or substance 2 when they interact for example freeze the water at the surface of the hydrofoil by running a refrigerant through the hydrofoil what happens now there is a thin layer of ice at the hydrofoil air bubbles come but they cavitate only the ice not the hydrofoil now okay and if they cavitate some part of the ice there we are already running in water 
more ice and the refrigerator is already moving so more ice would automatically get there so it gets regenerated and our hydrofoils remain intact in terms of orange orchards you surround those plantations with lemon trees hmm? lemons are sour monkeys don't like them they don't they will assume this is a lemon plantation not an orange plantation they will not even enter your plantation another solution that we use in india very often to handle monkey problem is a modification of monkeys which is langurs langurs just do not let monkeys come near you just one langur will keep hundreds of monkeys away from your plantation there oh, okay you have to handle a langur though uh, so <laughs> it's not an easy thing to handle anyways but you see the solution is also the concept of the solution is also exactly the same this is the power of standard solutions or this language of tris in fact uh, uh, so there is another movie which we could look at uh, again applying the same principles doing it the other way around but what i will do is i will upload this movie on our classrooms you can watch it there okay uh, we used the same example of substance field diagrams on srams and we could see that it is very very beneficial and uh, and uh, it could it could come up with similar solutions or better solutions than what we were looking at okay so in in terms of the toolbox we talked about you know additional tools of physical contradictions and standard solutions already now uh in addition to this there is a very very powerful tool called trimming where we initially do a function analysis of the system and then we remove peripheral components which are not necessary to the operation of the system we reassign the the functions of those components to the other mandatory components in the system we redesign the we reassign the function to the environment do whatever but we remove extra fluff from the material we talked about that in the last lecture also so trimming is a very powerful tool which we can use in tris uh this for example is a motorcycle suppose i want to reduce the cost of the motorcycle i will quickly make a function diagram of it and i will say oh there is some some stuff which is uh which is uh, which could be you know whose function could be reassigned to something else for example gas tank if i remove the gas tank and reassign its function to the frame or somewhere else in the system i could reduce the cost and see we have cheaper versions of motorcycles which could be used hmm? so i'm moving a slightly fast over here because i want to finish this introduction soon we started the session a little late because many of you joined late uh in addition to that there is another tool which is called trends of engineering system evolution which uses uh evolution of technologies across different domains to predict what would happen in in any any other zone also for example if you want to have a startup in in particular in a particular uh problem area or in a particular field you can already apply these trends of engineering system evolution and imagine what would be required 2 years down the line or what would be the reality 2 years down the line for example you know there is this one principle which says that fields replace materials and we see that everywhere for example typically i would have to physically move from my home to triple iit delhi you would need to physically move from your home to triple iit delhi to attend this class but today we are doing this class through video conferencing huh um on, on chips we we used we we use wires to transmit information but today we are also talking about on chip optical information transfer of on chip photonics more physical dimensions appear as another rule so 3d printing till some point of time we only had 2d printing or in fact much earlier than that we had only one 1d printing linear printing hmm? and today then we moved to 2d and then now we have 3d printing uh ai is moving from cloud to edge devices so more physical dimensions are appearing and so on so these rules you will see are are transgressing all boundaries of uh, technological systems every technical system typically sees these evolution uh evolution steps happening in them and uh, by applying tris principles you can already anticipate 
where you would need to innovate to stay relevant in the market. Hmm? Uh, we can use stress principles to also circumvent patents, to write better patents, and also to protect expected future evolution by using the laws of uh, technical system evolution. So uh, as a startup, you would want to protect your ideas. So TRIS can be very, very handy there also. Hmm? So I have populated the TRIS toolbox a little more. They, you see there are so many more tools there. And in fact, many, many more. Hmm? Uh, in this course, we will look at just a few of these tools. Uh, we will look at contradiction matrix, inventive principles, physical contradictions, function modeling, trimming. We will only fleetingly look at engineering system evolution rules, uh, standard solutions, function-oriented search, and feature transfer. But yes, we will look at those tools also. Many tools, we will only look in, look in, the, in the phase of projects, OK? So this uh, is used across many domains, across multiple industries, and it is by far the best known tool for ideation hmm? and identifying the best solutions. Uh, again, this movie, uh, I, we, I will post it on, uh, on the Google Classroom. You can watch it there. But I wanted to tell you that TRIZ is used formally as an ideation tool across numerous industries, across various domains. Okay, So the applications are not limited to uh, only manufacturing or chemical or uh, electronics, various domains use TRIS principles and TRIS methods to ideate and to arrive at inventive solutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, analysis of, for example, the value of uh, Samsung, the number of patents and the overall market cap of Samsung, the band value of Samsung. If you look at that, you see that there is a very clear correlation between uh, when TRIZ was applied, when patents started to increase and the overall valuation of Samsung as a company. Similar trend was observed in Hyundai. So companies have observed that their value increases when they apply inventive principles using TRIZ. Uh, this is some food for thought. You remember the story of Eklavya from Mahabharat? Yes. Hmm? Yes. So, yes. Dronacharya yes. asked him to cut his thumb and give it to him as Guru Dakshina. Eklavya promptly uh, considered to his request, but now he could no longer be the, the quality of archer that he was till then. Now, you already know about some inventive principles. Think about it at your homes and see what could have been done. Could Eklavya have done something else to save his thumb. Hmm? Can you think of something right away? We already talked about one inventive principle which could be used here. Thumb of his yes, foot. Sir. I'm sorry? So instead of giving thumb of his hand, he can just give thumb of his foot. Of his toe, or toe of his foot. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, or, good. Yes. What else? His left left thumb, maybe. Oh, he asked for the right thumb. So uh, we, we talked about this principle of copying, hmm? replicas. So what did Eklavya do? Eklavya said that I studied from, the, from a sculpture that I made of you. It was a copy of yours that I studied from. He could have said, because I studied from your copy, I can give you a part of my copy. And he could have given the right thumb of his hand only, but from that sculpture. Possible? Now, it did not happen yes. like that, but Triz could help you in real life challenges also. That's the only point I wanted to bring forth. Hmm? Don't go too deep into it. This is just an example there. Hmm? Um, Another example, real life problem. Uh, there's this transformer which has broken down and uh, you want to replace the transformer. You want to correct it. 
Now the problem is that the electrician cannot climb up. There is no space on this platform where the where the electrician could go up and mend it. So this transformer needs to be brought to the ground level. However, the crane that could do that is three days away. Hmm. We are in Russia. So this example is actually from one of the book of Alshula. Uh, we are in Russia and there is snow all over the place. If the transformer does not get corrected within the next few hours, the children will have to sleep overnight in cold and there would be that would be a big, big, big problem because no heating would be available. So something has to be done during the day itself. It's a bright sunny day. There is ice all around. But uh, the night was going to be really cold. I want to solve this problem. I want to somehow bring the transformer down and correct it before midnight, before night falls. What would you do? The crane is far, far away. It can't come. What would you do? Sir, we can put a slider and uh, so that it can slide down. Okay, interesting. But uh, that can actually, so you need to push it somewhere. How would you push? The platform doesn't have the space to push. Okay. So through the pulleys, you need to use tension trick. Sorry? So through the pulleys using tension trick. Uh, pulleys. Uh, pulleys. 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 Okay, but pulleys ko bhi kahi to tangna padega na. Crane nahi hai. You don't have a crane. Can't we use a can't we use a ladder hick, uh, to climb up? But there is no space for the electrician or anyone to stand up on this platform. It's a small platform. Okay. We can disassemble the transformer and reassemble it in the ground. Mm, that would take a lot of time, but even then to disassemble, there's no place for anyone to stand up there. Look at but it like disassembling this. can happen on the ladder also. Okay. So it would take some time, maybe not be possible by the time night falls. Simple solution, resources are available. I've already told you about the resources that are available. Ice is a good building material. We can extend the platform. Yes. Thank you. So. Ice, use ice to extend the platform, either climb up that ice platform and, uh, and correct the transformer or let the ice melt with the sunlight. The transformer would automatically, you just push the transformer onto that ice platform, uh, let the ice melt, heat it with logs, whatever, and the transformer would come down, let the electrician mend it there. Great, good. Okay. So then how will you put it back? But we need to put that back also, that the crane will come after two days, no problem. At least overnight you will have electricity. Hmm? Okay, great guys. Thank you. I'm already at 10. So we need to close the session here. Thank you and all the best. Uh, I will launch this poll of alternate timing for the class for Wednesday morning. I see many of you are struggling with 8.30 a.m. And uh, we'll see. Shivam, you have a question? question like the regarding the grading policy that will be absolute or it will be relative relative so there is just one absolute part in it that if you score more than 80 percent in every component of evaluation you will definitely get an a okay but there is nothing else absolute thank you okay also i had one doubt mm -hmm. so like these principles were formed years ago so have uh, like have they been updated? So the principles were uh, formed, uh, like the, the principles were identified from over 2 lakh patents across multiple industries. Hmm? So they are kind of time tested. In fact, there was a very detailed exercise that was done in 2002 to 2005, where new patents from new domains like semiconductors and uh, uh, software and so many places were also brought together and, and we actually validated, the, the, the researchers act, actually validated if the contradiction matrix holds true or not. So not only are the inventive principles good, even the contradiction matrix they realized was, was equally strong even now. Okay. In those terms, it's, it's, it's pretty timeless. Mm. Hmm? So... Yeah. So what yes, are your officers? Yeah, I will announce them uh, 
towards the end of this week because uh, it is not just my office hours; it's also the TA's office hours. We will announce all the office hours in the first uh, in the in the class on Monday, hopefully. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is we'll have all the timing set up by then. So, sir, so we have something, and we uh, want to realize that where we can, uh, you know, how we can abstract the thing into the matrix that you are talking about. So, mm -hmm. is that something that comes only by experience, or? Uh... Uh, yeah, it's it's a simple thing. We will cover it in the course. Don't worry. We will talk about technical contradiction matrix in more detail later also. Okay. And and you will also do lots of problem solving, so it will come. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. Great, guys. All the best, uh, and uh, see you on Monday. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Bye bye. Nice. Huh? Sir. Sir, I.